don't touch that dial. That's right. It is the after show. If everything goes according to plan, it's Friday, uh, September 27th. And ideally, you've just finished watching The Rings of Power, Season 2, Episode 7, Doomed to Die. Drama. Because I just finished watching it. Megan, did you just finish watching it? It is Thursday for us. This is release day, so... I did just finish watching it, and I'm I I have, ha, <laughs> ah. I feel like a lot of things kind of paid off in this particular episode. This felt very Game of Thronesy, where you know it's the penultimate episode, the episode before the season finale, and while there's clearly still a lot to happen, yep. a whole lot happened in this episode. They they run through those plot points. <laughs> they really did. We'll start, and we'll probably end with finally getting to see. The Battle of Eregion. And of course, as they're attacking Eregion, we're getting some, I don't, I don't want to say catharsis, but we're definitely getting some kind of a conclusion to this seemingly never ending arc with Anatar manipulating, not so subtly manipulating Celebrimbor. Our boy Celebrimbor grows a spine, loses a thumb, <laughs> and stuff happens. So let's, let's start with, with Eregion, because it was most of the, most of the plot it really was uh the battle scenes kind of go on throughout if you're wondering by the way where all the money for this show is you're pretty much this seeing episode. it here there were what appeared to be hundreds if not thousands of extras like this scale was unlike i don't even know if if i shouldn't say i don't know if game of thrones could have matched the scale of this but it it certainly is in that running. The scale of the battle, it never I never felt like what I was watching was somehow not to the scale that they were hoping it would be. Like it really felt like the people of Eregion were fighting for their lives against overwhelming odds and numbers. And as we saw throughout the episode, our boy Adar is clearly getting a little too obsessed with He's, he's fallen into that same trap that Galadriel has of Sauron above everything else. Nothing matters but Sauron. And now I think this plays back to what they did earlier when they were obviously showing the orcs as, or the, sorry, the Uruks, as having families and having a place to settle down and, and finally having a land and a hovel to call their own. Because clearly there's the one key Uruk that we keep seeing over and over and over again. I want to say sort of his right-hand man that seems to keep kind of questioning his commitment to keeping the Uruk safe and happy as a people, as opposed to just enacting his vengeance upon Sauron. Yep. I think yeah. they've did a good job of, of doing that. It's still really weird to empathize with the Uruks. I, I kind of like, there's a part of me that doesn't want to empathize with the yeah, Uruks. Yeah, it's a weird feeling, but it's good that they, I think, kept it to like that one guy. Cause like we saw his family, he's always the one that's like voicing it. Mm -hmm. So, and all of them, honestly, every time we see any other one, they're always awful. So, yeah, keep that's it fair. That one dude. It's just I that one dude. That specific dude. That's fair. Yes, because they do make a point of showing you a lot of other Uruks in this episode, and none of those guys are, are have that same empathy-inducing reaction that that one key Uruk that's clearly at our right hand man does. Yeah, but I mean, obviously, yeah, we're seeing a very possessed almost Adar in his single-mindedness to go after Sauron. Yep. Are we starting to get a sense maybe of how the army itself is going to end up going over to Sauron as opposed to staying with Adar? Are we getting the sense? At yeah, least I, I think say, I think definitely it seems like they're setting it up for Sauron speaking to the Uruks about how Adar didn't care about keeping them safe. He sent them to die and I'm not going to do that. You have a home. We'll just go back to Mordor. Yeah, I, I think I, I think it's still going to be and I think the rest of the episode is going to help us with this, but I think there's still going to be some. I'm not saying Sauron's not going to rule by fear because he probably will, but I, I assume there's going to be some level of trickery involved in getting the there's going to be some initial appeal to look at what this guy's been doing to you. Maybe don't follow him anymore. So the elves do show up, they make a grand charge against the Uruks and they're stopped cold by Galadriel in a cage. In fact, afterwards, Galadriel says, you should have just kept charging. <laughs> you should have just kept going. Yeah, and then of course, during the course of the battle, as things are sort of seesawing back and forth, there's a moment, Arendir actually points it out like, oh, that's, 
it uh, looks like the orcs are the orcs are scattering or they're clearing the way and and they, they sure were clearing the way for for the big guy the very which big again guy. is another scene that shows adar's sort of i don't want to say like not really caring about what happens to the orcs but he says send him in and the yep. one Uruk guy is like, you know, he's going to kill our own people, too. And Adar's like, yeah, I don't care. Send him in. And yep. then we get what I assume is either a troll or a giant or something. I don't know if they ever say what it is. A big, big. Yeah. Big. <laughs> I'm guessing it's it's similar to the troll that appeared in Lord of the Rings, the Fellowship of the Ring, when they first go to the Mines of Moria. Yeah. I would assume very, it doesn't look quite the same. But I love... <laughs> I loved... When he, when he takes the field and he's just casually stomping and clubbing and smashing, like he looks like he's in the eye, the produce aisle of the grocery store, just, just shopping for goods, just spending some time walking around, squishing and maiming and killing and clubbing as he goes. Uh, and then of course, uh, there a battle ensues with that. And our boy Elrond, who I'd like to point out Kind of a he badass. Did he did pretty good. Okay. Adar even said you'd be more at hand with a scroll, a scroll in your hand than a sword. Sword. With, to which Elrond says, well, you've never seen me with either. And I think people tend to forget that the elves are immortal. So yeah. even Lots if he he's currently... That's what I mean. Even if he's currently a politician, he could have spent several lifetimes training and honing his swordsmanship before turning to becoming a diplomat or, or a poet or whatever it is. I mean... Do all the elves just be one thing for thousands and thousands of years? I would think after a while that would get kind of tedious, especially since he's half elven. He would probably have a more a, a strength to him since the since men are typically more a lot more robust than elves, and and like I would assume it would be easier for him to train and and all those types of things. So, but yeah, we definitely see Elrond kick some ass, and I think we get to find out that. The High King, Gilgalad, you don't get to be High King by collecting bottle caps because Gilgalad shows up and he starts whooping all kinds of ass. I was saying, like, he was, he was doing a lot, <laughs> which Elrond did not want him to do. He's like, why no. are you here? Listen, I need to be here. This is where I'm needed the most, and that's where the king should be. I feel like because there's no real, because there's no dragons, because there's no, because it's all literally just in the mud thousands of beings just just hammering away at each other it really felt like the stakes were actually high in this one we have to cheer for somebody to finally get into a region and see that sauron is actually running the place yeah and that shit's say, gone bad know, it was very conflicting because i wasn't sure like i don't want all the elves to get killed but i also want adar to go in and kill sauron which again the cursed with knowledge, right? We know that doesn't happen. We know Sauron lives. Uh, for a time at the beginning, the first maybe third or half the episode, the illusion, the, the glamour for Celebrimbor is still in place. Yep. He caught and a glimpse of himself in the mirror. Because of all things of a mouse. <laughs> a mouse that keeps repeating the same pattern over and over and over again. And the candle that was not burning down. Yep. Uh, but yes, finally Celebrimbor breaks whatever sees through from whatever spell that's been woven around him. Now, a couple of interesting things sort of happened in this one. First of all, I was curious last week when Sauron handed him the dust or the, the, the powdered down version of Mithril and told him this would work just as well. And it turns out that wasn't powdered down Mithril. Nope, it's his own blood. <laughs> his own black blood, probably from his time as a flob and a sloop. I would think, anyways. He he spent a lot of time as a flop of his flute. Because last week when he handed him the the mithril, I was like, wait a minute, did was there something that happened off screen that did I miss? Like a piece yeah, of dialogue like, oh, that said he did manage like to get some mithril. Yeah, I didn't. I never saw that. And, and we'll get back to what happens with Celebrimbor, but more importantly, towards the end of the episode, when Galadriel finally makes it into a region and essentially tells the remaining elves on guard that no, Celebrimbor is actually the true lord he's of Region. <laughs> I mean, isn't he? I mean, I think he's not a little... Not in the way that they crazy, think he's crazy. But not in the way that they think he's crazy, that they're clearly all being manipulated by master manipulator. When they go in to uh, essentially arrest Sauron and they surround Sauron, 
And Sauron says, you don't think you're the only one that gave me power over you, do you? And then he essentially takes physical control of the remaining elves of the guard. I would like to know what he meant by, like, you gave me the power over you. He clearly entered into some kind of a pact with Celebrimbor as they were working. But these were like city guards. Like, what, what, what happened that allowed him to say so? It's not just like... If yeah, he just said something along the lines of like, "Well, this, are, do you, do you, how dare you underestimate my powers, mortals, or whatever," and and then yeah. did something, but that's not what he said. So, how so do you? The think... only thing I can think is because they were the guards, they were the ones that he was like talking to and working with up on the walls in case mm -hmm. like building that rapport in battle was enough for him to like weasel his way into their head. Oh, maybe, or when he said he was taking charge of the day-to-day -day operations of Regeon, if that yes, meant that that's somehow... true. Because we don't actually know how many days that was. They aren't very good at conveying what that time. No, time enough for that for Celebrimbor to make nine rings, right? Yep. But yes, as we discover, Celebrimbor finally figures out what's going on. Finally, sees that he's been given some sort of a glamour. Sauron's like. What's the big deal, bro? You wanted peace and quiet to make the rings. I gave you peace and quiet to make the rings. And then we get uh, we get a couple of unfortunate deaths in this one, but we do get a death of the young elven girl that was working at the smithy. Yes. Uh, that is, again, influenced by Sauron up on the parapets. Yeah. Uh, again, now he's got some weird telekinesis that he can, like, make guys move, uh, makes a little bit more moves. So that's the first indication that he can do that. Again, each episode seems to heighten and broaden Sauron's powers. And all this, by the way, before we even get the One Ring. So he's still, he is very, the Lord of Eregion. Very strong. Yes. We don't know, uh, just we're going to keep leveling up each time, apparently. Yeah. Celebrimbor is pretty disgusted, but then he gets chained to a desk and basically told, finish the rings or I'm going to burn the place to the ground and everyone will suffer and da 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 Like the very typical mustache twirling yeah, it's the, it's the, we've style, now moved right? on to threatening instead of manipulating and I think it was telling too towards the end of the episode when when Celebrimbor and Galadriel do kind of have their tete-a-tete -tete and, and Celebrimbor says I think part of me knew the whole time but I yep. wanted so badly to finish the work yep and that's he knew there was the, something off but he didn't care he was it was the doom of what of what uh, uh, ultimately Celebrimbor's downfall but what we get out of this episode because we were curious as to why the nine rings of men were so much seemingly worse than the elven rings and particular the dwarven rings and now we know because they're literally made with Sauron's blood yeah because they say it seems like there's not any mithril in it at all no just no. metal and his blood. So what we have, what I didn't realize at the time, is is an ever escalating. So the Elven Rings barely have even a hint of any type of corruption to them. The Dwarven Rings clearly have a certain level of corruption since he had a hand in making them. And then the Human Rings, the Mortal Men Rings, are going to be just bonkers batshit crazy because it's literally yeah. his blood. It's literally him in it. <laughs> now, we do get to see... The rings are not available anymore. Celebrimbor finally, you know, I mentioned at the top of the show, uh, grows a spine and loses a thumb. He cuts his own thumb off to get out of the, the handcuffs that he's in. Yikes. And gives the rings to Galadriel. Because we do get a sort of last stand of the elves as Adar and the remainder of his reserve troops gather up their weapons and begin the final assault, ground assault on Eregion. And it looks like, no joke, there's maybe 20 elves left. And it looks like there's hundreds of Uruks on their way with Adar in tow. In fact, the first elf Adar meets is Arendir. And Arendir is no more, kids. Bye, bye, bye. Yes. So spoiler alert, 17 minutes into this program, <laughs> spoiler alert. <laughs> Arendir meets an unfortunate end. A lot of elves met an unfortunate end, but Arendir in particular ends up getting deaded by Adar. Again, I guess you don't get to be the father of the Uruks by collecting bottle caps. I mean, you get there because you're a badass. It's not like him and Arendir had this giant duel over 10 minutes. It was like thrust, thrust, bang, bang, thanks, bye. <laughs> Arendir got like one good stab in, yeah. but it wasn't enough. <laughs> it's, it absolutely was not enough. And then, yeah, it, it looks as though the elves are essentially the remaining elves, including our boy Elrond, who we know lives, is, are doomed because a certain somebody didn't show up. What the it, fuck is going on in Casa Doom? 
<laughs> I get why it happened, but yeah, Elrond just continuously saying that Durin's going to show up. The faith that he Durin has in his come. friend broke my Durin heart. <laughs> There's no crying on the after show, Megan. There's no crying on the after show. Felt feelings. <laughs> Kaza Doom. Finally, what we talked about in the previous weeks, especially last week, I remember mentioning it specifically, how come nobody else has noticed that the, the king is a completely different dude? Why are all these dwarves, these stubborn, headstrong, proud dwarves just blindly following what is clearly a corrupted king's orders? Well, now they're not. Finally, they've decided to take a stand. The dwarves stand with Durin, led by Narvi, who is the Delve Master. Uh, we don't see Disa, though. We're not sure where Disa has gotten off to by the end of no, the No, not at the very end. But we do find that the dwarves are finally done and they take a stand. And Prince Durin yes. gives a rousing speech up on the mantle. You know, our loyalty is as deep as the earth and as strong as the mountain. And we will go and fight. And who's with me? And, and it looks like there's just like... 12 doors up in the plinth with him and they're all like yeah and then he turns around and all of Kaza Doom is there and then he does that great Kaza and they all go do and you're thinking yes like you're thinking literally like the two towers right yeah that they're gonna go and, and they're going the battle to, like... of Helms Deep and look to the east on the fifth day and all come around the hill and Elrond looks to the east on the fifth day and there's no Durin because Durin's dad has flipped his shit Yep, he started attacking the uh, the ones that were guarding the mine, presumably. Locking the mine, keeping yeah. them from digging. Uh, in fact, they say it flat out to, to keep them from unleashing the evil, the beast, uh, or whatever that we know to be the Balrog. Yeah. Um, yeah, we do at, at some point see King Durin pick up his axe and leave his throne and go off. We don't know to where. Now we know where. Now, having said that, Narvi says he cut through us like butter. But, but what? Like, is the ring giving him additional? Say, like, he's one like old dwarf with an axe. So, like, like, last episode, he was able to, like, throw his son across the room. Fair. Okay. That's fair. It just seems like if there's only one of them, it shouldn't take, like, they need to. Yeah, you they should need to be keep able to, like, if you're the whole him. army to fight one king. It really shouldn't. When they were saying that, I'm like, okay, we're going to just do a quick about face. We're going to go kill that dude, which I know he probably doesn't want to kill his father. He probably wants Fair. to like, imprison him or do something. But Yes. But I don't know why it would have to be the entire dwarf. But send a detach. 50 of you go and figure this out. You other 4,000 come with me. We're yep. going to go just go with Narvi. 50 of you should be able to subdue one old man, even with a powerful ring. There's 50 of you. Figure it out. You know what I mean? Like it's, Yep. It should it have been. It should have been enough. I'm. Narvi literally says cross, to him. I'm very hopeful. If you that send the off beginning the army, of the next episode is going to be the dwarves showing up and showing and helping. Up. Quite possibly, I don't know. Uh, again, I'd like to point out this episode was an absolute banger. Again, probably the best episode that we've seen. There were a couple of moments where I was like. They're trying to make us feel things that I don't necessarily know I've got enough investment. Like the one uh, elven archer that oh, gets yes. feathered with a bunch of arrows before she fires like, the final arrow. Just we, met. We've just met her. So for such a dramatic death for her, it was a cool scene. But I think that would have worked better if that was Aaron Deer, as yeah. opposed to Aaron Deer dying the way he did. Because um, I did care about Aaron Deer, But I think the one thing that I didn't care about the most that I think they wanted to was the kiss. Between Elrond and Galadriel. Like, For some reason. Well, I know it was so that he could pass her the brooch that was oh, going to yeah, allow no. her to unlock that the That was handcuffs, the actual, which like, is probably why reason. it was like the chastest, sisterliest kiss that you've ever seen in your whole life. Like, as, mm, okay, we're done now. Yeah. But, well, I was going to say, like, because they're not, they're never a thing. No, no. But the way they kind of, the way they shoot it, they make yeah, the it way seem they shoot like it the music they put underneath it. That's like, what I mean. Like they make it seem like you should be invested. This is something you should want to see, audience. And uh, the audience is like, no, I don't. No, no, we're good without this. We don't what, need this. What's a season of Rings of Power without a weird love interest for Galadriel? Apparently, 
I mean, I can honestly see this going nowhere. Like, I can see them yeah. having an awkward moment in the next thing and, and them just agreeing that he did it so he could slip her the brooch and that was it. Yep. It's like, we're not going to talk about that again. <laughs> no. Otherwise, uh, is there anything else from this particular episode that you wanted to address, Megan? I think that basically covers it. We've gone through most of it. Uh, I, I'm, I'm invested in the dwarves. I want more dwarves. <laughs> Yes, I think I think at this point, well, we've already sort of eliminated one plot point with Aaron Deer. He was going places that only sort of he was going, or at least he was the focal point of those places. So yeah. we've sort of tied up that thread. Because we need to figure out what the what the hobbits are doing, what Gandalf's doing, what New do we doing. do we need to figure out what the hobbits I mean, and Gandalf I'm, are doing? I'm personally okay if they just drop those plot threads, but it would be very weird Ooh. to have the final two episodes of the season just completely ignore My half ever. of the story that they've been making. Not invested in. in any of that but yes we will find out for next week ideally we will get some sort of a conclusion to the battle of Eregion before they explore the other plot threads but i guess we'll have to tune in to find out which means you'll have to tune in to find out what we think about those episodes if there was anything that we missed this week that you think we should have talked about go ahead and put it down in the comments below we have one more week to go and then we'll find out how this particular season is going to end and if we're going to get the next season. But yes, go ahead and hit that sub for us. It really helps us out. Uh, and if you like it, go ahead and like it. And if you want, go ahead and leave us a comment. It's going to help us as well. Otherwise, I guess we'll see you next week. Stay geeky, everyone. <laughs>